Dr. Christina Kabash, and I'm here to talk to you today about advances in foot and ankle arthritis. Arthritis affects 91 million people in the United States. Symptoms include swelling, pain, stiffness, decreased range of motion, and startup pain. Startup pain is the pain you feel when you first get out of bed in the morning those first few steps, or after you've been sitting or driving for a while. It usually loosens up after a few minutes, and then feels better, but then continues to hurt as you get more active. This is an example of ankle arthritis. So this is the normal ankle, the normal x-ray, and this is the arthritic ankle and the arthritic x-ray. You can see the changes in angulation, the loss of the space here. The space is cartilage. So cartilage is a smooth gliding surface and cushion between bones. When it is lost, you have bone on bone uh, rubbing, and then you get bone spurs, breakdown, cysts, and degeneration. Most ankle arthritis is post-traumatic. Fractures or broken bones can create an irregular joint surface that rubs unevenly and wears away cartilage. So this is an example of a fracture, and you can see where all the little breaks are, and even though we try to fix it perfectly, we can't make it exactly perfect, and there's a, a high incidence of going on to ankle arthritis. Why? Because cartilage cells, not only bones, are damaged with this type of fracture. Stages of ankle arthritis. Starts with inflammation, proceeds to cartilage breakdown. Cartilage breakdown causes bone cysts and erosion. All right. Bone spurs often form with arthritis, and this is the body's natural way of trying to stiffen up a painful sore joint, causing stiffness. Uh, deformity is also associated with end-stage ankle arthritis, as you see there. Okay, non-operative treatment of ankle arthritis involves rest, low-impact activity to lessen the pressure on the bones, ice to calm down inflammation, heat to warm the joint up and get it moving, compression to help get rid of the swelling in a joint, which is heavy, dull, achy, and painful, and anti-inflammatories also to re reduce pain and inflammation. Uh, bracing is important for offering stability to a joint uh, that is painful and may feel unstable because of the pain. Uh, keeping off the joint by using either a cane, a walker, a rolling knee walker, or a wheelchair may be helpful. So treatment of early ankle arthritis, Advil, orthotics to help support uh, the ankle, a Braca bottom shoe. Uh, so that the rolling goes through the sole of the shoe and lessens the need for the ankle moving and cushioning, because uh, walking barefoot or walking in hard sole shoes will add more impact and trauma to the joint with every step, and cushioning helps alleviate that pain. End stage ankle arthritis, these are the AFO or rigid braces that I was discussing, and simply getting off the joint and resting. So operative treatments of ankle arthritis involve arthroscopy, fusions, and ankle replacement. So ankle arthroscopy is useful in early stages of ankle arthritis. So if you remember that x-ray of the bone spur, here's the spur on the, uh, the tibia or the top bone, the bone spur on the tail or the bottom bone, you can go in with a scope, remove the spurs, and now the ankle can freely come up without the bones hitting. We make two tiny uh, incisions in the front of the ankle. One incision is for the camera, or the arthroscope, and the other incision is for the workhorse, which is the burr, the grabber, or whatever we need to do to get in there and clean it up. We have cartilage grafting techniques that we can use. So here's an example of a hole in the cartilage surface. Here are the, the scope and the workhorse portal, portals. We can take autograph from the knee, and use that as a donor uh, cartilage transplant, or we can also take a donor from uh, another source, uh, which can be either uh, freeze-dried or live, and insert it into the area as well. And once we have severe ankle arthritis, more than just one pothole, then you're looking at ankle uh, replacement versus ankle fusion. Ankle replacement is motion retaining. Ankle fusion, you lose the motion, but you also have a better chance of completely losing the pain. Uh, the risks of an ankle fusion adjacent joint arthritis, it may not heal or it may heal crooked, and you can have painful scar at the incision sites. Uh, people also worry that their gait is going to be altered. Uh, so this is an example of a person who had an ankle fusion on the left. 
and you can see there's still a lot of motion in the foot. So these are the adjacent joints around the ankle that are compensating for the loss of motion at the ankle. Uh, there's also uh, an arthroscopic uh, form of an ankle infusion, which has smaller incisions, fewer screws. And once the joint has been prepped and all the cartilage and bone has been removed, then we can place wires where we would like to have the screws to fuse. And we do this under uh, big x-ray in the operating room. We then put screws in over the wires and we're done. And this is six months post-op where you can see that that space no longer exists and bone has formed across the fused ankle joint. Uh, however, if there's severe deformity in the ankle, uh, it cannot be done uh, arthroscopically and needs to be done open with larger incisions. Sports following fusion. We get asked this a lot. So in one study, 94% of patients were able to return to golf, 77% were able to return to skiing, 38 to tennis, and 12 to 25% to sports like jogging, running, football, soccer, or basketball. However, no professional athlete has ever returned to sports after an ankle fusion. So, total ankle replacement. Who is the ideal patient? Somebody who's older, their 50s to 70s, thin, low demand, uh, meaning that you know, most of their activities are a walking or low impact uh, type activities, uh, and minimal deformity of the ankle joint. Uh, current designs in total ankle replacement uh, now have studies showing good five to 10 year results. However, there are no long-term follow-up stu uh, studies of 20 years or more with the current designs. Designs approved in the US, Salto Tolaris, Integra, Star, Zimmer, and Invo. The risks of a total ankle replacement, uh, you may need 20%, uh, may need additional surgeries, which can be as small as debridement of bone spurs that have formed uh, or were not removed at the time of surgery. There can be stress fractures around the implants. Uh, there can continue to be post-operative stiffness. If the joint didn't move well before the surgery, it may not move well after the surgery. Uh, and then the most dreaded one is loosening of the prosthesis. The implant that I use is a Salto Tolaris. It has a five uh, to 10 year follow-up published in 2020 through 16 patients with a retention rate of over 95%. So the most recent third generation implants are doing very well. So here's an example of a total ankle uh, replacement. So preoperatively, these are the x-rays. You can see you no longer can see the cartilage. It is gone, both from the front and from the side. All right, so what we do is we make an incision down the front of the ankle, and then we use a jig on the outside, which gives us our alignment. We remove bone from the tibia and from the talus, and this is intra-op, removing bone from the tibia and then from the talus, <coughs> and then another view from the front. We then insert the implants at one year post-op. Uh, this implant, like uh, for a total knee or a total hip, there's metal, uh, insert, and metal. And this was the ankle that we replaced at one year from the front and from the back. So we were able to improve. In older, more sedentary patients, both procedures work well. With an ankle fusion, motion is lost with the risk of adjacent joint arthritis, but less risk of revision surgery. With ankle replacement, motion is maintained, but with a higher risk of revision surgery. Thank you for watching this video.